Ta da! Time to let that down. So I got it strapped up here. I then got some jack stands under there, but I don't really trust it. So don't ever go under it while it's like this. I'll show you how I uh, how I lower it. To it. I like to separate the uh, knuckle from the half shaft, sway bar link, and tie rod. Then that gets to stay with the whole vehicle. It's just a lot easier. And then this thing probably weighs 1,500 pounds. I found that car dollies are the best bet. Uh, cheap Harbor Freight ones, they just end up broken in half so I couldn't handle this worked on stuff like Cavaliers but a uh, big old North Star as far as a uh, wiring goes you have to disconnect the main computer and fish this out through that little tiny hole there it's a royal pain if you've not done it before there's a uh, two nuts on the side of the computer right there there's some bracket this bracket's supposed to be easy to uh, remove but it's certainly not so which this is mounted on here with two 10 millimeters and then this is attached to the firewall with uh, I think it's an eight or a seven millimeter as for the driver's side there's um this harness which goes over to the fuse block area. You just gotta free up the, the relays. There's two seven millimeter nuts that hold on the assembly. There's a 10 millimeter that bridges there and also connects to that red harness. And you kinda undo those. And there's some brake sensors and stuff. You can disconnect those. The big pain really is you have to fish uh, and these are all new brake lines, I just did these. You have to fish those cables. They go between... They go between the engine and the frame rail and the, and the, and the brake hoses. So you have to fish those out. I end up disconnecting this because you have to disconnect that anyways. And this lets the uh, transmission cooler lines and everything come down with it. Um, fuel lines stay up here with it. This little hose is the uh, 
I used to be it's gotten kind of dragged down, but it attaches to that flex hose on the front of the master. And that's all you're left with. So that there's uh, obviously the vacuum uh, hose to the booster. There is AC connector there, which just goes with the engine harness. The fan connector goes with the engine harness. The there's some stuff here that's just kind of tangled. I just disconnected it. That AC connector also goes with the harness. Um, and then that's what the two hoses look like that come to the uh, uh, back of the cooler or back of the, the heater core. Those are a pain too. I just removed the reservoir and then through a series of cussing, yelling, and prying with screwdrivers, eventually worked those loose. Don't forget about the uh, steering linkage. Um, what I do, there's a, I think it's a 12 point. Uh, bolt underneath there. Uh, it's an 11 millimeter, and I just kind of push the boot up out of the way. You can see it hanging there, and get in there with a long extension through the fire or through the uh, uh, wheel well. And uh, it's got Loctite on it, so you kind of have to give it a good oomph to get it free. Um, and then I go in with a pry bar right under here, and just kind of bump the. Uh, knuckle off it and it'll slide right off uh, these are usually pretty easy to get loose it's just if you forget about them it'll yank that shaft right out and then you're really screwed also um, do something to stabilize the steering on it I just put the uh, seat belt through it and buckle it back in and that stops it from rotating when you're taking stuff out because if you uh, let it get out of center, it will uh, destroy the clock spring in the wheel. You don't want that. That's hard to get. Other than that, you just kind of pick away at it. So what you want to do is you want to work this harness back across the engine so it's hanging across the trans. Trust me, it's got a big cable that goes down above the trans. It's a big pain to get to. It's easier to uh, work of this off if you're pulling the engine off the transaxle. You'll also need to make sure you get this mount down here. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it. Kind of hard to see. Uh, there it is. There's two bolts there that hold onto the trans. One under here that grabs onto the uh, right uh, Right down there, right down there. Uh, it grabs onto the engine block. That one will keep you from separating. And then just remember, you got a connector there. You got a connector up in there. A couple in there, one right there. And you gotta get that ground off of there. See that one right there? And yeah, you just kind of wrap it back. And then I think there's like, there's only three or four bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. Um, and there's one, which is a pain, buried down there. And then one, two up top. And then I think maybe two or three on the other side. One back under there, and then one down there. See it? And it'll come off. I had to drive a pry bar in between the block. I was prying down there. Uh, there is two guide pins, and mine were all galled up. It wouldn't let it separate. This is the second time I had the engine out, so I think it'll be easier this time. Uh, these engines are anything but leak free. Now, you'll have a connector here, which goes to the power steering switch. 
I'm going to replace that because I'm having trouble with it. It's a weird little connector. It goes in and behind. You'll also have that little connector that is down behind the like transmission bracket. And then there is uh, one more up in there. I don't know if I can get a picture of it. Oh yeah, see it? There it is. That one right there. Just connected to the top of the trans. I think it's I'm not sure what it is. Maybe the speed sensor. And then there's a ground right there as well. I've already undone it. But it bolts to the engine block. You want to come over here and there's your EGR and God knows what that is. I think it's a vacuum switch or something. And check this, Kate, this when you uh, it's a pre-molded one. I replaced it with a couple pieces of vacuum line because the original one was cracked and I had a vacuum leak there. It's kind of hard to find though. And then you kind of fish these down and around and out. And then there was one more I forgot about, which is this uh, crank position sensor in the front, I think. And then the harness is pretty much free. So you can do that. Uh, wiggle a few more of these free. And uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's out, as they say. Last but not least, don't forget this guy. He's a pain. And if you forget to plug them in later, or unplug them, you're going to be upset. I like to remove the power steering pump. It makes it easier to um, leave this with the lower half. But you got to kind of get in here and uh, pry her loose. Uh, it's hard to see, but... Okay, there, I'm kind of under the foot of it. Mix it up. There's two bolts that hold it. One there, and then one down there. And you just gotta kind of keep rocking it so it pops free. Once it does, you can pull it off. You just need to undo this nut. Holds that cable on. And I think there's maybe one more. Yeah, down here as well. This one here. And then, uh, It'll fall off. You can lay it off to the side and uh, power steering stuff just stays with the uh, subframe. Once you have the two hose clamps released, this one here and this one down here, and just give her a wiggle and a jiggle and she's free. I done. I know this is like all kinds of sacrilege, but I just have a couple of adapters. There's a little cutout right for it, and you get on the 18 millimeter uh, bolt right in there, and out she comes. And wiggle it out, and I just kind of go in there and fish her free. One down. Uh, like four more to go. Now, if you come in here and fish this little cable out of the way, you can see the second one. There she is. And same deal. Get your agadaga set to backwards out agadagas. Fish. There you go. Push it in there. Oops, I'm not on it. There, now I'm on it. Okay, maybe you should break it loose first. Now with the regular wrench. There she goes. And since I'm impatient. Number two's out. Number three. You can just barely see it. But trust me, it's there. Third verse. Third verse. Same as the first verse. Sneak it in. Gauge it. 
get that on it. Get that on that. And crack her loose. Goes. Your mileage may vary. Like I said, I've been in here about six months ago. Not even. But uh, one more. And I don't even try to really fish them out. I'll go in there with a magnet later and try to grab them. Uh, once the engine's off, the water crossover, which is this thing here, uh, will be free and you'll be able to see the top of the trans anyway, so you may as well just get it then. The last one is down here. I've already got a wrench on it, so it's right there. You can't get at it. Hey, there's that 10 millimeter I lost. Uh, you can't get at it because the trans is in the way. Uh, so you gotta use an open end. I like this ratcheting deal here. Um, you kind of just gotta find a little pocket and uh, give her to loosen her off. So I got one of these ratcheting wrenches on her, and uh, usually I'll just double it up like this. Oops, got set the wrong direction. On there. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. And then give it all the beans. Oh. There. That's probably enough. I think get my hand out. Give me a second. Took a couple more tries with the, with the double wrench, but now it's moving. Yeah, I made this one a 15 just to mess with you. All the others are 18. I think you can actually get the hand in there. But it's out. I always put anti C's when I put these back in. Uh, aluminum block and all. And then, if you look, that is a good place to pry. Um, I had a big screwdriver in there working on it on this side and I was using a little heat on the other side. Uh, I think the dowels are right in that, that ear right there. Uh, I could be wrong though. It might be lower down. I'll uh, take a picture when it's out. A little prying action here. Oh, yep, I got lucky. It's still free. There. And you can see I got the hoist on it. And I pick it up by that bracket, that bracket which comes on the engine. Yeah, you can't really see it. Trust me, it's there. Uh, front dog bone. And then I, I thread a, I don't know, it's a hardened bolt I found in my junk drawer. And one of those carabiners I like. Get the good quality steel Kylock carabiners. I don't mess with the aluminum stuff. And uh, pick her up that way. So I've just got a little bit of pressure on it. So I can start to uh, free the transmission. I almost forgot. There is this little bracket back here. Which you'll need to disconnect and separate as well. So there's a... I think that's the... Uh, front, what do you call it, O2 sensor, and then this one is like harness that goes up for, I think the oil pressure sensor and some other things, and then this big bad boy here is transmission and ABS, I think, so you want to have those free, and then there's just one 10 millimeter, or maybe it's 8 millimeter nut. And you can see the dowel right there, right? Like this was what was giving me grief last time. But uh cleaned it up and sanded it so it shouldn't be as bad this go around. 
side it's got a screwdriver and a wiggler free see that gap opening up right here you don't see that well but that's what you want that's how you do it you just kind of keep working it you do have to uh, let those bolts free. And I think there might be another one behind it I have to get to. And then uh, you have to kind of bump it over the K member. So it has to like come up. So like come up and out. Like that. So up and out. I forgot you need to remove this heat shield. That was bad, but it wasn't. There's one bolt there. And there's one right there. It's just a little heat protector for that connector right there. And then the, you have to get that black black bracket out. Otherwise, the engine can't come forward, really. I think you can leave it on if you uh, get both these off. But I usually just take it off. It's really only one more bolt holding it on. I'll fish it back in later. So I uh, think it's free. And you can see I got a good little gap right there. I like this old tire iron for some reason because it's a straight a pointy bit. Get that pointy bit right in there. Give her a wiggle. I've got. Just a little bit of up pressure. And I'm biasing it towards the front here. Maybe that's too much. I think I'm taking some of the weight off it. I'm actually gonna jack it till the frame starts to come off the ground or off the dollies. Oops, so there she's floating just a little bit. Here, oh, that was productive. See, see the flex plate. But you got, like I said, you got to be careful. You can't make sure you don't hit that. So you got to get it high enough up. That comes off. Oil pan clears. But I screwed up, so I forgot to disconnect that harness right there. So I'll have to go do that. There's a harness that goes all the way through there and comes out here for this mess. So I'll have to undo that. And then I just did undid the bolts for those right there. So yeah, a bit of a goof. Uh, luckily you can get those two nuts by going in on either side of this thing. There and there. Those two. And then two in the bottom, all 15 millimeters. And then it gives you nice clean access to the cables I forgot. So I can work those free now and uh, hoist away, hopefully. There is this connector, the AC connector up there, the blue one. A little connector down there. I think that's the oil level sensor then you have the oil pressure sensor you have what I think is a crank position sensor and then a god knows what blue connector sensor above that so but you can kind of and there's two hangers there's a little tiny hanger here that goes uh, into the back of the AC compressor bracket right there and then there's this little clip one here which is I didn't really want to fight with me didn't want to go but now it's free and I just have to work it out of there between the AC compressor hoses all right all that worked out I think it's free let's give her 
See him up against the oil pan already. Bit of a wiggle. Uh, let me work on it a bit here first. I think then the origin, the right way to do this is probably to uh, take the trans off separate. I don't really know how much of a pain that would be, but uh, got it on and off once without doing that, just leaving the transaxle on the subframe. I'm gonna try it again. Okay, I finally got it. Uh, I needed to do a couple things actually. First was I had to kind of support the transmission a little bit. I think you should, I let it drop too far in this picture, I should probably take it up off that. You need to have something supporting it. Uh, that's what I didn't do. That kind of screwed me up. Uh, I'll have to fix that. And then I also took a bar and went in kind of here and then just gave the, the pan a little tweak up and it popped it forward enough that it uh, could come out. Uh, and then there was one more connector I had forgotten. It was back here. This one right here plugs into the uh, normal position sensor. Yeah, yeah, she's free. Uh, for anyone wondering, you do need metric bolts. I just picked these ones up from the hardware store. I'll we'll have to put the put the size down in the comments. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then I used some just large hardware as spacers to give me some extra room. Uh, and yeah, bolt it up to that stand right there. I did um, grind down. You can see it here the tops of these two because it'll uh, run into the bottom of the, the water crossover up here, if you don't. So, and then here's a good idea of how many bolts you have to chase, right? Uh, there, this is the same pattern as like the Iron Duke, but it's not got all the bolts. One, none there. Two, three, four, five. And uh, yeah, that's all you need to get it out. And then obviously there's a brace underneath underneath you need to get to. Uh, four torque converter bolts. Um, I replaced these with a harder grade because the ones that come with it are, are torque to yield. Uh, I have to order those from McMaster Car. I'll have to look up the grade on those and tell you guys those as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to pull it out of the way now and, and work getting the flywheel off so I can replace, I'm pretty sure it's the rear main seal that's leaking here. I, well, at least I hope so. Otherwise, I got a bigger problem. I got like a, I got like a, another case leak or something that's still plaguing me. But I'm encouraged because it's wet down there. So I'm hoping it's, hoping it's dumb and it's just a rear main seal. Uh, stupid, should have done it last time I had it out. And I'm paying the price, so. Yep, she burped the seal. You can see it's pushed out there. That's completely my fault. That was dumb. And she's puking. Making a big mess. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Dumb. You guys uh, do the case seals. It's not that scary. Uh, I think I got it right, but I just screwed this part up. Uh, at least I hope. Definitely screwed up this seal, though. You can see it's not even seated correctly. So I definitely did that wrong. Right, Layla? She didn't care. Oh well. So I figure I'll try and show you how to fix this mistake. Um, need a couple of screws. These are, I like these because you want something that tapers all the way down to the end. You don't want like a self tapper or anything like that. 
Uh, these are just a couple of screws out of my junk drawer. These happen to be number 10s. Uh, of course, machine screws for, I think these might even be stainless. You'll need a small-ish bit. I got one that's about a size smaller, so it should give me a good purchase. And then, uh, yeah, you uh, pick a spot. I like to pick a spot away from the seal, or the count on the case, and uh, drill it in. So uh, I'm going to pause it here so I can drill with two hands, and I'll come back. Okay, so I got the first one drilled. Uh, I usually do two. Two seems to work just fine. And then what you'll do is you'll start the screw, uh, get that in there, and then I've got a pry bar I'll, I'll use to pull on it this way. You have two, you can kind of work it back and forth. Okay, so I got both of them in there now. And you can see they're just a couple threads in. I just got it into the meaty bit and stopped. You don't want to drill too far, and you don't want to drive these up against the block. Um, now I'm just going to take this is a regular old like uh, pry bar TP. I like this one because I can kind of get behind it and give it a little tug, and you see it just move. Okay, there's one side. She's swinging on me. There's there's the other side, and there you have it. If you did your job right, no major scars. Got a little ding there, and a little ding there. That won't matter. But, uh, yeah, I guess you can see where I screwed up, huh? Looks like I got a piece of trash in there. Must have been from the uh, silicone I added, squeezed out. So, uh, yeah, if you're redoing the case seal, uh, make sure you put this in after you uh, cock it up, crank it down, because I... I think that ex basically extruded out from between the joint. That's interesting. That was dumb. Probably was a good case seal, but then I, uh, I foobarred it up. So don't be like me. I, I guess I'd say put the seal, you know, put the case ass together. They're gonna goo out here. You probably put something, maybe some tape around the, the crank, stop it from kissing the crank. And then uh, let it firm up, and then probably drive your seal in after. I wonder if I'm the only one that did this. Probably. Oh well. I'm going to trim that up and clean it up. Okay, so I greased it up with a little bit of RTV, like it says in the TSB. Uh, I got my new seal. Note this is the single piece, not like the two piece that comes in the laters. Uh, as far as I can tell, you don't upgrade, this is an early block, this is in the 92 or 93, I think. Uh, you don't upgrade those blocks to the later. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. If it leaks again, I'm just selling the car. I'm tired of pulling this engine in and out. Um, but what you want to do is you want to kind of hang it. You want to make sure first that you don't have any RTV on the crank surface. And it's nice and clean. Uh, mine doesn't look like it's got any major scoring. It's smooth, which is important. I might have a little RTV to clean up there. And then uh, you'll basically hang this on it. And I'm going to use that block of wood and your hammer to gently tap it home. It doesn't take a ton of force. There's a, there's a chamfer on the inside of this lip that gives you a little bit of start. And then it's packed with grease to uh, give it, make sure you don't have a dry start. I'm going to wipe this down with, it, with uh, brake clean. On the outside rim here, make sure it's all nice and clean. And then uh, probably just run a little bit of that grease along the inside leading edge. So I got something to uh, to grease it as it goes in. So you can see I kind of have it hung on there. It's not pushed in flush. But the important part is that leading edge is, is sealed. I didn't roll that over. So it's got enough wiggle room that you can kind of start it. You can kind of start it. And then it... Uh, while you move it in. Now I'm going to take that block of wood and just finish driving it home. I've got most of the way in now. And I was having trouble you kind of walking it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you kind of have to hold one side and tap on the opposite side and do kind of a star pattern. 
and just keep working. Eventually it'll sit down into it. I'm almost all the way home, but uh, the hammer I was tapping it at with is, is hitting the block now. So I'm gonna switch to just an extension and kind of gently finish it in until it kind of fully seats. I've had this problem before when I put the RTV on the outside of it like that. Um, I think it just, it, it loses a little bit of the grip it would normally have going in. Uh, like I said, Bolton said use, use a RTV though, so I'm using RTV here. But so far so good, it went on nice and smooth. I don't feel like it hung up or twisted or did anything stupid. Uh, so here's to hoping, I guess. So I think it's good and bottomed out now. You can hear like the tone change. It goes from kind of a hollow sound to a high ping, 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 ping. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up now and then uh, chase those bolts out real fast. I've got an old bolt that I cut a flute into, clean the garbage out. I think I'll probably just use RTV this time. I've been told that they are tapped through this uh, the, the the flange here, which I think you can kind of tell, maybe. I don't know. I was told you have to seal them. I think I'm just going to use uh, Loctite this time, since last time I used some anaerobic sealer, and I don't know if it did a... It seemed like, it seems like the bolts weren't as tight as I would have liked. Didn't have to use heat or anything to get them out. Uh, but I'll probably check the instructions again or check the internet and see what they say. Probably says throw the engine in the, in the ocean, but we'll see. Okay, so I just got done drilling out the uh, ball joint. I needed to do those while I was in here, so I figured it'd be easier if I put the engine back in. Uh, what I got here is probably not advisable. Um, but what you need to do is you need to get the, the transmission to rock. So you can kind of get the engine made it on the dowels before it falls in, gets the, the lower cross member. I screwed this up last time. As a result, that bottom bolt got bumped up, and so I had to beat it back into submission uh, to stop the oil leak. Uh, so I'm trying it this way. Again, probably not advisable because I'm putting a lot of pressure on the bushing that's inside here. But I kind of just, it's not too much weight. I, I just lift it up with my hands and kind of put this bar in place, block of wood, um, to just get it angled the right way. So I'm gonna swing it around and uh, plug it in. By the way, if you're, um, if you're doing the case halves, you will probably not be able to get that one apart. I tried and tried and tried and I could not get that sucker to to open up, you can see the bolt's pretty much gone. Uh, but you can take this thing off as an assembly. So if you take off the flange bolts there, come around and take off that hardware, use some heat, and that actually came free. Uh, or you can unbolt it from the, uh, the lower crossover there as well. Uh, and then the whole thing came away as a one big assembly. And that was much easier. One last thing I want to show you is these crossover pipes are unobtainium. Uh, you can't really buy them anywhere that I've found. Uh, used junkyard ones, they're going to be no better shape. Mine rotted out right here, obviously, and then this bend right here. Uh, so what I did is I, I cut the bad section out. I used a crimping tool to, to make a bead, kind of like this one here. It looks almost exactly like that when I was done. Um, and then put some of the silicone hose in there, and that seems to be working pretty good. Uh, they're pretty close to the exhaust. So that's why I went with the silicone. I figured live longer, maybe, uh, until I can find some new ones. Uh, but yeah, they are nearly impossible to find. Um, yep. So I got the bolts torqued back in. Uh, like I said, I went with higher grade. These are 12.9 grade. They're M9, no, no, they're M8 by 1.25 pitch uh, millimeter metric bolts. 
Um, I torqued these to, I think, 31 foot-pounds, maybe a little over. Uh, I'd have to go look. I'll put it down when I put the bolt size link in there. Um, like I said, the, the factory ones are super cheesy, and I don't know if I would trust reusing them. I reused all of the bottom end bolts when I resealed the case. Uh, it seems like most people said you could, but uh, these ones were super cheesy. Uh, but yeah, it's all back together now. And this is an easy way here to keep your crank from rotating. You just stick a screwdriver in between the block and one of the, uh, the holes in the flex plate. These are those two bolts I was talking about when we, we pulled it apart. Like I said, I just kind of leave them dangling in here. They don't hurt anything. Uh, and they're kind of a beast to get in there. So they're already anti-seized up. And they'll be waiting and drop on top of them. They're nearly impossible to get through. Um, and by the way, if you ever lose hardware, it's probably where it ends up. There's a little pit there. You can see all the little idle air control nuts I've lost over the years. What you gotta do is you gotta get the starter nose past the top of the transmission before you run out of clearance down here. So you can say, see by having it angled up, I can still have it kind of dangling over the cross member. And I should be able to push it back onto the guide pins on the trans before I drop it down finally into the into the cradle. Yeah, so that's the trick. Um, I got that bolt in and started. I was able to start these two at the top. Kind of gave her a wiggle and a jiggle. She's seated on the pins. You can see I'm still, I'm not contacting the pan yet. So I was able to slide back. Now I can take my box of wood out and then put that uh, mount back in. And it should be able to, to wrap it up, get it ready to go back in the car. So it took some wiggling and finagling, but I finally got that mount back in place. Got it kind of loosely bolted to the transmission in the engine. And then I came around and got this one. It's just kind of sitting in place. But the uh, back on the weight of the K-member now, so I... I think I'm just going to try to bolt it all back together and then uh, show you how it goes back in the car. I got to finish working on the other ball joint too, so that's all pretty boring stuff. So I'll uh, finish putting this back together and then I'll, I'll show you how I put it back into the car. Alright, so I lifted it back up with the hoist. Sorry for the mess. Got it up on the jack stands. It's actually resting on the jack stands. I only leave the hoist there, so it's like a safety catch sort of thing, because I don't trust those jack stands when they're up that high. And I uh, I did disconnect the hoist and then kind of scooted her under there and then immediately reconnected it. Again, I don't like it hanging this high up, but you can take off. There's normally like a, a vacuum canister here, and that'll give you plenty of room to just kind of skirt her in right through there and yeah you just want to kind of make sure that you're centered up 
Um, I'm probably going to have to move it this way some and make sure that you got to kind of be careful when you get over on that side to guide everything kind of around all the brake lines and whatnot. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to lower it back down, get it kind of lined up, and then probably call that for a day. I've been working on this for two days straight now, off and on. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. But it's all back together, everything's torqued down. I had to go uh, chase some wires on it too, uh, which I didn't bother filming. Um, I had this power steering switch fault that I wasn't able to make go away. It turned out there was a broken wire um, underneath uh, where that wire turns and goes under by the heater hose there. There was a broken wire in there, so I hopefully I got that one. And then I had a bad EGR too. Let me show you the. And these, they're actually pretty easy to diagnose. I, I bought it just to shotgun the part at it, but uh, turns out if if this don't move, she bar. And yeah, you can kind of get a little squish out of it, but it doesn't really move. Um, I heard people cleaning them, but the new one was like $30 or something. So, I don't know. But the new one, this plunger goes in and out. This one's completely stuck. Hopefully that's my issue. Uh, first I, uh... Grind off the head as best I can with the just a cut off wheel. And then uh, eventually until you can see pretty much the center of it. Well, center pinch it. I'm going to start with like a quarter inch bit. Maybe two thirds. I switched to, uh, I don't know, two, two, three sizes up. Just kind of chamfer the edges so I can take off the head. I don't really want to drill with it so much as just make sure there's almost no material holding it on still. And then a punch, a hammer. You can see it's folding up and collapsing. That's what you want. So, yep, there we go. Uh, lowered it down. I had it at, I call them stops. Had it at nine stops on the jack stands, now it's down to four. And I'll probably go a little lower before I hook it up to the engine. Uh, you can see you get awfully close in the front there. So I'll probably have to, you kind of have to like lower, adjust, lower, adjust, lower, adjust. But I've had it for today, so I'm gonna call it a night. But hopefully 
only maybe a couple more days and have it uh, back together. But she's getting there finally. <laughs>